Section 17 help our tribe to and uh, to keep us running in policy without having politics and all that together. Well, Mr. Chairman, first I want to congratulate you on the geothermal project that you've embarked on. If it's successful, you'll be known as the chairman who got the tribe into deep hot water. <laughs> so, congratulate you on that. And you've asked a question about IRA Section 17 corporations. These were corporations set up by the United States Congress during the New Deal. Been around for a long time. The idea was to create uh, immunity for tribal resources. We want to first protect tribal resources. We want to protect tribal resources from taxation. Uh, provide uh, a fictional vehicle for tribes to conduct business. It's not the only way for tribes to conduct business. It's one of many choices. To say that it's better than an LLC, to say it's better than a uh, tribally a chartered corporation, that these are determinations that have to be made by the sovereign nation itself and by their advisors and attorneys. Mm -hmm. It's not, I, what I want to emphasize in this interview is that the form of business that you've selected is not as important as the purpose of the business, the capacity building of the people who are part of the business, the commitment those people have to, the, to carrying out the business, the due diligence that's been done to make determine whether or not this is a business that the tribe should pursue, whether it makes good economic sense. So if there's anything I want to leave with the viewers of this video, it's that there's no magic to selecting the form of business. It's not, there's, there's not a magic to that. What's really important is determining, first of all, as a sovereign nation, is this what we want? Why do we want it? And do we have the proper training, the proper capability to undertake this business? And if not, how do we get there? And these are things that we can help you with. We can offer CEO training, we can offer management training, feasibility studies, when you're seeking long-term financing for a project, the bank or the lender is going to want to know, is this something that makes good economic sense? Is this something that will succeed? We can connect you with uh, major business schools throughout the country or consultants of your choice to make that determination. And banks tend to look at third-party assessments with uh, some degree of approval. Because when the University of California or Stanford or somebody else does a study for Bentonville and they determine that something makes sense, the bank will look at that as an impartial third-party assessment, more likely to give you the financing that you need. On the other hand, if they find that it's not a good idea, they've, that's actually as important as a thumbs up because they've saved you the time and trouble and the waste of precious tribal resources in pursuing a project that really makes no sense at all. We, we were discussing, uh, Chairman, the idea of good governance and the Harvard Project and some 30 years of study has shown that you really can't have uh, a, uh, an environment conducive to economic progress without a stable government. And we see this throughout Indian country. We see tribes with enormous land bases and great resources and very little prosperity. We see other tribes with virtually no land base virtually no natural resources with terrific success. We can look internationally at uh, nations such as Singapore, which uh, is a, surrounded by ocean, doesn't have any natural resources, uh, a tremendous booming economy. We can take lessons from, from nations like Singapore and from tribes that lack a lot of resources. Uh, Winnebago tribe of Nebraska, the uh, Sism Potawatomi Band of Oklahoma, these are tribes that, that lack uh, resources and, and, uh, and land, and yet have been tremendously successful. Part of the puzzle there is establishing governance that is stable. There's a rule of law. When 
outsiders make investments on that reservation, there is some degree of confidence that they have that their property, their investment will be respected, that with a, a change of leadership, which of course we never know, never, never happens in Indian country, it's never a change of leadership. <laughs> It's a change of leadership as part of the democratic process. Right. It's inevitable. But the investor wants to know, with the change of leadership, will I have a comfort level with my investment? And the answer should always be yes. So that, that person will be in, in the game for the long haul without fear. And, and this is certainly what I think, Chairman, you're trying to develop That's right. in your community. Yeah. And I think you're taking the steps to do that. I'm trying to. Trying to uh, get ahead here, and uh, and get a government over there that you know that work together and, and stay together until all the projects and stuff are over, you know, until we get something going. And I think uh, that it'll work really, really good because we have all these people that are all working together and and uh, trying to get something going because we're one of them tribes that don't have that much land, and and the only thing we got is hot water. <laughs> and that's a terrific resource. Uh, the other thing is that you've got to diversify. Uh, for those in the audience who are farmers, who have been in the farming business, you know how important it is to diversify your crops. Everything has a trajectory. Every business has a trajectory. There's a time of ambition and building, and there's the inevitable decline. It happens with every, no business is truly sustainable in the long run. So the, the key is when you're in this side of the trajectory of the curve, invest your profits in the next big thing, whatever that is, and have several of those things going so that as one reaches fruition and then fades, the next one is on the upswing. Never put all your eggs in one basket. That's right. 